All right, so today is a treat. I've heard um, the the rumblings of Kemper, 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 you know, throughout throughout history, and I'm like, what is a Kemper? By the way, this is Michael Britt. He is the Kemper man yeah. when it comes to Kemper sounds. Don't it's true, and he's also in a uh, very successful country band too. So you're one of those guys. You have you're a multifaceted dude. Multifaceted, <laughs> multifaceted. All right, so he's in the band Lone Star, which is awesome. Um, but you're also a complete gear junkie. He's got amps and guitars. You can't see them in the screen, but they're everywhere. Yeah. But so the Kemper thing for you and your roadie, especially, yes, has to be a godsend because you get. It's, it, what, what, I mean, you basically get to mimic sounds and put it's them all a, into patches and. It's a tool. It lets me bring all the sounds of all my favorite amps, ones that I own, ones that I've had forever, or just ones that I've borrowed or you know whatever. I get to take all those and put them in my little palette of colors and I can just scroll through a knob and Dude, pick one to sick. use. That's kind of awesome. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to have him show us the top 3 uses he has and then he's promised to teach tutorials. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put all his info down below and the links he's got all sorts of social media. He also sells the Kemper pack, so make sure you check those out. All right, so let's get into it. All right. All right. Okay, so walk me through it. So obviously we know that it, it mimics amps. You got effects on there, the whole yep. nine yards. But as a touring musician, what are like the top three things that you really were like, oh, this is going to make my life a lot easier? Um, well, coming from, I used to be an amp guy that had many amp heads yeah. switching. So you, you can't see them, but his whole house yeah. is littered with <laughs> amps and guitars. Um, I had a Bradshaw rig with four heads switching and all that. So to be able to get, but the problem with even that, my clean sound still had to be relatively the same volume as my lead sound. Okay. So with the Kemper, it lets me have a Princeton for a clean. Right. You know, a little 15 watt amp and, and a 50 watt Marshall for solos. Oh, okay. Because the, the volume of the amp really kind of doesn't matter. Once right. it gets into the Kemper, your Kemper will level, level everything out. Right, so the, the levels, you're not fighting <clears throat> levels. And, right, so my right. cleans are cleaner, my distortions right. are more true because I'm not just trying to find a pedal that sounds like my Marshall, I'm getting my Marshall tone. Okay, so okay. So now that you're talking about tones, this is like, what, what are some of your favorite, favorite so, tones you got going here? What, like, what have you mimicked that you use the most? Uh, probably my Divide by 13 LDW okay. now. That's Smart man. It's a, It's got a push and a presence, so it's... It's, I don't know what it's supposed to be modeled after, but yeah. it's a little bit more a little bit, yeah. yeah. But it's a clean, it's one of the better clean sounds. It's really muscular. Yeah, I like it's, it. So this is my basic clean sound. Okay. And if I hit it hard, it'll yeah. It's got a little hair. It does sound a lot like it. <laughs> okay, and so it has effects too, yeah. It does, and I actually love the effects in the Kemper. I mean the. They've just came out with a whole new reverb suite, but I don't even have it on this oh, okay. box yet. Uh, it's still in beta, so I'm just waiting for all the bugs yeah. to be worked out before I put it on my road. This is my road Kemper. Okay. So uh, the delays sound great. Um, a lot of the other units, because I, I profile, I mean, I pr make presets for the Helix and okay. the other different boxes. Yeah. Um, and one of my, I don't, it's not a really pet peeve, but you know, if you're on a Helix or one of those kind of things, you have to choose, you, you want to be a tape echo, analog echo, digital. Sure. So you have to kind of choose your flavor before okay. you go in. The Kemper just has their basic delay. I mean, they have a lot of fancy ones with pitch shifting and all that, but their mm -hmm. basic delay, you can make it sound like a tape and make it sound analog because it's got EQ filters in right. it. It's got ducking, so everything's oh, nice. got ducking. You yeah. can make, Explain what ducking is. So case. ducking is like the 20, it came about with a TC2290 delay. Mm -hmm. When you play, it'll duck the, the delay so that if you're playing, the delays aren't stepping on what you're actually playing. Yeah. It'll kind of pull them back when you're playing, and then as soon as you stop playing, it'll push the levels back Can you, can back you show them what it is? So let me just turn, make sure my ducking's turned up a little bit. It's it's was really cool. Like I, I heard about ducking, but I've never used it before. And you, when you showed me earlier, I was like, "That is well." This awesome. is just on the delay, but I'll show you that that really cool ducking because the Kemper lets you duck all the effects. Yeah. So as you delay. pick so, harder, the delay goes down, right? Right. Is that so the here's premise? here's with no ducking. I'll just let me turn up the mix so you can kind of hear it. Okay. Uh, let me uh, tap it a little quicker. Oh, I'm on the set millisecond here. Okay. Okay, so it's loud. Right. Now, if I turn the ducking up, it'll um, kind of mute that. But as I... That's crazy. So, right. 
Uh-huh. It doesn't get in the way of your playing. Yeah. So basically, it's just a way to get it out of the way of your playing. No way. So, the, so wow, how does it get? That's really interesting. So it's all about the pick the, attack. Yeah, it's kind of like just putting a, a gate on your... Um, one a trip. Yeah, so you have a threshold. Once it, once your volume of playing drops below the threshold, it yeah. shoves the, the delay level back. Oh, that's super cool. Okay, so yeah. what, what, what... So you can use that for other effects, too. So there's one sound that I use in our show where I've got a... The tremolo is ducked, so... If I'm just playing like the rhythm of the song, if I hit the chords hard, uh-huh. you won't hear tremolo. But as the note decays below that threshold, or as it, if I play really soft, you will hear like a tremolo kind of. Nice. Tremolo. Okay. So without having to hit any buttons, just the way I'm playing, I can go. <laughs> and you don't hear tremolo. Right. But if you let it decay a little bit, you'll start start hearing it. Oh yeah, yeah. That's so cool. So I can you, make it more do you pronounced. Use that in some of your own songs and stuff. Oh yeah. So for like our song when Cowboys Didn't Dance, I use that. It's like an A minor thing, but if I play really hard, you don't really hear any tremolo. But yeah. as it, as it play soft. soft. Yeah. It's cool that that first note to be yeah clean. That's, so that's the coolest part when I hit that beat, you know, and then just yeah, 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 without having to touch my pedal word at all. And so does that that works with most of the effects? Uh, almost most of them have the ducking feature in it. No and, way. And I've got one patch that I did on, on my very first pack that um, it's got a high octave in it. So yeah. if you play really soft, you just hear the high octaves. <laughs> but if you dig in, no way. That's cool because it almost goes between like almost the pad sounding parts to yeah. So it's oh, super cool. And it's all depending on how hard you pick. No way. So th- these things just make make life easy. Cause yeah. You're not having to just pedal dance to get yeah. these different tones out of it. Right, right, right. So you so you had a good Marshall. What about what about like a let's hear like a Vox or a okay. what, what do you what do you like amp wise? Like if you're gonna design a thing for the road, do you just stick with a couple or you? Yeah, I try to. Even though I have hundreds of profiles now, yeah. I, I stick to my my basic few. I've got that third, and most of them are amps that I've owned for a while, like that third power clean. That's okay. I use that for a lot of stuff. Um, Look at all those patches you I got. I know, I know, I know. Got too many. So <laughs> and it's just a. Oh yeah, that's nice. That, and then I've got a Marshall tones and stuff. So he's going, I don't know if you can see it, but he's going over to this uh, his well, computer. Rig manager software. Yeah, and there's like, how many sounds do you have in there? Yeah, I got lots. Yeah. So yeah. now, as far as patches, you can do this and then send it to people? Or like, what's the... Yeah, they're all portable. So no I can just way. save it and put it in an email and send it over or whatever. So the, they're that's really awesome. small files. And that's how... You know, when people buy my packs, they yeah. just get a little download email and they get no a little pack. Way. Them, so. so, how many packs do you have? Uh, around twenty different packs, different groups of amps. So, I don't like to concentrate on like a one amp company because I don't really want to make amp companies mad. Yeah, and, but and I usually try to find stuff that's either vintage or hard to find. Yeah, uh, try not to, you know, yeah. hurt amp companies. So you got like others. Supros and all that kind of stuff. There's, in there too. I've got some in here somewhere. <laughs> Super, what, yeah. it, now, do you ever like mimic pat sounds of like back in the day or like? Uh, I try to. I mean, I, uh, don't tell me you got a Van Halen one because I'll be really uh, excited. <laughs> you know, I got this really weird Van Halen one. All right. And I don't know if I could play like Van Halen, that'd be awesome. But okay, <laughs> this was one I did for Frankenstein, and I don't even know how to play Frankenstein, but it's just got the low octave. Oh, All right. Yep. Sounds anyway, gnarly. so I just got that kind of stuff, and then yeah. there's the Van Halen one, which was so. Yeah. Yeah, dancing in the streets. That's awesome. How cool is that? Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. So, what what effects come with it? I mean, is it basically like anything else? You get the choruses, the rotaries, all that stuff. All that stuff, yeah. It's got pitch shifting, then and the harmonizer is really good. It tracks yeah. really quick. Oh, that's amazing. So, I mean, I use that. There's a few songs that we do live that have harmonizers or harmony parts. Right. So, um, a song called Mountains that I you know recorded a harmony track. Let me find it. There it is. So it's um. 
So, so, and you're the only guitar player, right? Right. Ah, oh, that is amazing. So, there's two songs that I use the harmonizer on for those kind of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just nice. I mean, if I think of it, it's usually in there. Yeah. Okay, so you use the ducking feature. You Obviously, you can keep your <clears throat> levels consistent. Yep. Amp per amp. Yep. And then what's one more? Morphing. Ooh. So morphing is probably the coolest thing to come along with the Kemper that I've found. Okay. Um, so what is morphing? So if you take a preset sound that you have in your in your Kemper, uh, morphing just means you at the push of a button, or you can even assign it to an expression pedal. Okay. So I use the button on the the remote, so I just hit the button and it goes to the morphed state. Okay. And the morph state can you can basically change any number of parameters all at once. Okay. Um, so I'll use this if I'm going. I, I'll use it to control mix levels. So if I don't want to reach up to the second row and turn my delay off mm -hmm. and on, or if I want to add a tremolo and a delay at the same time, I'll just put it on the morph. Okay, so you got the morphing for the delays, you mm -hmm. got the arpeggio stuff, that's kind of cool. What what other kind of a, like effects would you use that? Do you, do you use that in some of like your songs where you'll like morph in some other kind of effects? Or? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, we do that song, Walking in Memphis, that Mark Cohn did. We okay. recorded that. So I use, uh, the rotary comes in on the bridge, so my basic sound would be something like... <laughs> I just hit the morph button, and it brings in the rotary speaker. And it's, I'm actually blending a rotary speaker and a little bit of a chorus, a wobbly vintage oh, chorus. Oh, nice. Wait, so, so hit one note so they can hear how it morphs so, in. Oh, just the morph? Yeah. Yeah, so it slopes in. Yeah, and you can control the house, how fast it comes in and out. Oh, that's so cool. You can make it immediate, so, cool. so as soon as you hit the button, it changes. Yeah. Or you can make it even really long, like two or three seconds, fade in and fade out. Now, and then you just have to hit the button again and it fades out. Yeah, so that's the cool thing. I'm not having to tap dance. It's all the same button. So just turn it off and on, basically. Oh, that's so cool. Huh. Okay, so what about like old 80s, like compressed kind of... You got a good compressor in that whole bit too. Compressor's great, and you can mix it, so you you don't. What do you mean you can mix it? Uh, so like, like dry versus like the womp. Yeah, so you're okay. basically blending in the compressed uh, versions. Because if you just use compressor, sometimes it can squash, squash too much, it, yeah. and you can hear it. I don't yeah. like to hear the compressor. I like yeah. to feel it. I like to feel a little bit of the sustain that it adds. Yeah, a little bit of the pop. So here's the sound without com without the compressor. <laughs> you country guy oh so it's like a pop like a snap yeah, it just uh, trims a little bit of that it, yeah a little bit of that off that's so, interesting because it because it gives you that snap but it even kind of evens it all yeah, out but it fills up the kind of around it it's the same yeah. feel i get when you have a really loud amp it just kind of swallows you a little bit yeah when it's gives you and it's really quiet you yeah. feel like you're plink 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 <laughs> Guys, like turn down, and you're like, I can't. You don't understand. Now, if I'm just playing by myself, I usually prefer no compressor. Okay. But in the band, something about just how it fills up the sound, it just gives you sustain and right. And especially with ear monitors now, a lot of people use in ear monitors. Yeah. And we do. Uh, having that compression just kind of eases your ears a little bit. It's just a few. Anytime you get less transients. Yeah. When your driver's a quarter inch away from your eardrum. Yeah. Inside it's, your it's brain, nice. basically. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So, wow, so your stage volume must be ridiculously low. I mean, or does your bass player use something? Well, we're all direct, so the bass player is direct, but he's got an SVT rig behind him, and, right. and it is set pretty low. But our drummer, yeah. everything's based around the drummer. Drummers. Our drummer's really loud. And uh, <laughs> Caveman. If I don't have any stage volume, it sounds really weird. It sounds like just drums on stage. Yeah. So the bass player's got his SVT rig, and I'll usually have a cabinet. Um, and that's another thing the Kemper can do, since your, your tones are not volume dependent. Right. So I can have my sound yeah and it sounds whatever it is and then i've got one knob that's a dedicated stage cab knob so i'm just oh, turning okay. it up and down it doesn't affect the so quality what, of the distortion is, is it like a pa speaker or do they make their own little cabs they, they're starting to make their own cabs okay I've, what I've do got, you use if it's a it's if it's during our summer touring where we're outdoors uh, a bunch i'll bring a guitar cab and a big uh fry it power amp look at you because it's a guy. tube it's tube power amp and tubes just feel yeah they push better. the air differently yeah they do. they're not as linear yeah so i use that but if i'm in theater mode like when casinos theater small rooms yeah. where you're indoors i can use a full range cabinet so i'll just use like a full range i've got one that uh Zytone built for me oh interesting so it's a it's a 12 inch with a rear mounted so do you just use it like a like a monitor like down it's the off stage to or? the side and okay. it's just kind of pointed 
a lot of times point away from me, but I hear enough of it. Yeah. I don't feel like I'm naked. That is the weird. Yeah. That is a weird thing when you don't, when you're so used to after years and years of playing with an amp behind you and yeah. all of a sudden it's not there. You're like, wait a minute, this is weird. Yeah. And, um, it sounds great in my ear. So I'll, I'll leave one, my left ear monitor in so I okay. can hear clarity and yeah. all that good stuff to hear. And in my open ears, hearing the PA, the room, the drums, the bass, uh, and my guitar rig. Right. And it's weird how it, I'm just used to it. That sounds yeah. right to me. Yeah. Because I can hear all the warmth and all the air, but I hear all the clarity from here. Oh, that's it's kind of cool. like um, people have bad eyes. You know, yeah. sometimes they can wear one contact for up close and one yeah. far away. Yeah. And you just get used to it. So that's uh-huh. kind of what it is. Oh, nice. That's amazing. Well, thank you for your time. You're welcome. And, uh, so if you want to check out his site, go down below. I'll leave his YouTube channel. You're going to start doing tutorials, right? I hope to, yes. Don't don't be saying hope because I'm, I'm steering people your way. So you better start getting <laughs> to work, start. buddy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then he also, um, how do you get your profiles on your website? or? Yeah, inbrit.com. And so he hasn't bragged on himself, but he is pretty much the, the Kemper man when it comes yeah. to profiles. Don't lie. It's right. true. Because I... I've heard it from other people, so you don't even it have to brag on it. It must be true. <laughs> I just appreciate that. Yeah. So do you have a social media or anything like that, too? Yeah, I'm on uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter. Okay, so this. light them up, and then when you don't see, after like a week or two, you don't see a new tutorial, <laughs> be like, dude, uh, you promised tutorials. Yeah. It's on video. You're, yep. you're, what happened? Yep, exactly. <laughs> In all my free time. Exactly. <laughs> all right, thanks for watching. Thanks.